ok welcome back to the series of lectures on transform calculus and in the last lecture we have introduced Laplace transform and then uh, we have evaluated Laplace transform of some elementary functions and uh, we ended up with the existence theorem where we have seen that if a function is piecewise continuous and of exponential order then the Laplace transform must exist and in fact this uh, these conditions are sufficient condition for the existence and to support that we also discuss some examples. So, let me just uh, recall briefly what we have done in the last lecture. So, the Laplace transform of a function f t and we denote it by this f s this will be given by 0 to infinity e power minus s t f t d t and provided this uh, improper in, uh, integral converges for some s and we have seen that uh, that if f is piecewise continuous function and of uh, exponential order then Laplace transform that is L f t exists for real s greater than alpha and that we uh, after that we have made two remarks very important remarks one was that f s tends to 0 as s approaches to infinity this is true for if the function f is piecewise continuous and of exponential order. So, for the Laplace transform of the piecewise continuous function and of exponential order goes to 0 as s approaches to infinity. So, here we can also conclude that if uh, a function f s or a Laplace transform uh, does not converge to 0 that means, uh, this is not the Laplace transform of a piecewise continuous and of exponential order function. And the uh, second remark was to support that uh, the uh, these conditions that the function is piecewise continuous and of exponential order they are sufficient condition and then we have uh, supported this argument with the two examples the one was 1 over square root t and this function is not a piecewise continuous function even though the Laplace transform exists and the second was uh, 2 t e t square cos or sin also we can take e t square and this function because of this e t square is not of exponential order and the tra Laplace transform exists uh, for this function. So, this was from the last lecture and now we will continue this lecture with the properties of Laplace transform and these properties uh, will be helpful to calculate Laplace transform of, of complicated functions and later on uh, for the differential equations. So, we start with this properties. So, properties of Laplace transform and the first property is the linearity linearity property and it is easy to say that the Laplace transform of the sum of functions or linear combination of these functions f k s will be the sum of the linear combination uh, the sum of the Laplace transforms of these functions and the proof is very simple we can just uh, take the definition and we have the integral and then the integral of this sum will be the sum of the integral and from there we get uh, directly this result. So, let us just go quickly with one example. So, the Laplace transform of cos omega t will be Laplace transform of E i omega t plus E minus i omega t divided by 2 
and then the linearity property we use. So, we get half and the Laplace transform of i omega t and plus half Laplace transform of e minus i omega t. And these Laplace transform of these exponential function we have uh, seen in the last lecture and they are simply s minus i omega this constant sitting with t and plus we have 1 over s plus i omega. And if we simplify this, so we have in the denominator s square plus omega square and then we sum these two. So, we will get 2 s and this 2 gets cancelled. So, we have s over s square plus omega square and similarly we can also get the Laplace transform of uh, sin omega t for example. So, this will be here the Laplace transform of e i omega t plus e power minus i omega t uh, with minus sign. Now, we have sin and this will be 2 i and now again we use the Laplace transform of this and Laplace transform of this. So, minus will appear here and 2 i and in that case we have uh, these s will uh, get cancelled and we have 2 i omega. So, 2 will 2 i will be cancelled again. So, here we will get simply omega over s square plus omega square. So, this is for the sine transform. So, this was the linearity property. Now, we move to uh, first shifting property where we can have shift in, in the time variable or in the s variable. So, there we have the first shifting property and in this case it says that if Laplace transform of f t as usual we denote by f s, then the Laplace transform e a t f t will be simply a shift in s. So, this f s will be f s minus a. The proof is uh, simple. So, we start with this Laplace e a t f t and then we have 0 to infinity e power minus s t e a t f t d t and this is 0 to infinity e minus and s minus a we combine these into 1 t and f t d t and now as per definition we have just instead of this s here s minus a. So, this is f s minus a because remember our f s is a Laplace of f t that is 0 to infinity e power minus s t and f t d t. So, just here s is replaced by s minus a. So, we have this f s minus a. Now, go for the example. So, the Laplace transform of e minus t and sin square t. So, Laplace transform solution the Laplace transform of sin square t first we need to get and then we can apply the shift theorem to get uh, Laplace transform e power minus t sin square t. So, here we can have this sin square t we can write 1 minus cos 2 t over 2 and then apply linearity property. So, we have half and Laplace of 1 is 1 over s we have minus half Laplace of cos 2 t that is s over s square plus 4. So, this we get 2 over s and s square plus 4 because we will get there 4 and this 2 will cancel to this 4 we will get 2 there and s over s square plus 4. So, this is our f s now and now we get the Laplace transform of e uh, e minus t uh, sin square t. So, this is by the by this shift theorem we have f uh, s plus 1 because we have e power minus 1 here. So, we will get f s plus 1. So, that means 2 over s plus 1 s square plus 2 s plus uh, 5 because we have here s. So, this s we can have s plus 1 here also s plus 1 whole square. So, we will get simply this term. 
Now, the next property that is a uh, second shifting property second shifting property. So, if the Laplace of this f t is f s and we have now shift in f. So, the f t minus a for t greater than a and we have 0 when t is between uh, 0 and a. Then the Laplace transform of this g t function will be e power minus a s and f s. So, if we look at this g t, so if our function this is f t for t uh, here the origin and this is t axis and f t. So, this is our function f t and if you we look at the g t function it is simply a shift. So, between 0 and a our function will be 0 and then this t greater than a it is just again f t. So, now we have this shift of this function it's the same function, but with this shift g t and in that case the Laplace transform is e power minus a s f s. So, we go quickly to the proof of this and the Laplace transform of g t as usual as 0 to infinity e minus s t g t d t and this is because this g t is 0 up to uh, from uh, 0 to a. So, we have a to infinity e minus s t and this is in this range it is f t minus a d t. So, what we can do we can substitute this t minus a to a new variable. So, that we have d t is equal to d u and now the Laplace transform of this g t will be the limits when t was a here. So, u is uh, this 0 and infinity it will uh, remain infinity. So, e minus s and t is a plus u and we have f u and uh, d t is d u. So, e uh, power minus s a is, is, is constant with respect to this u. So, we can take it out of this integral and we have e minus s u f u d u and this is exactly the Laplace transform of f. So, here this is interesting we have uh, one alternative form which is normally used in, in the application alternative form of this uh, second shifting theorem. So, instead of defining that that g with uh, this f t minus a t greater than a and uh, 0 between when t is between 0 and a we can have a, a rather simpler form for this. So, if again the Laplace transform of f t is f s then we can write simply the Laplace of f t minus a and multiplied by this h t minus a it is a heaviside function I will uh, define in a minute and this is the same result what we have for the g t. So, minus a s and f s. Now, this where this h t minus a or uh, we can have uh, t also. So, here we have 1 if t is greater than a and this is 0 if t is, is less than a. Okay, so, what uh, do we have here now basically this is h t minus a it is greater if t is greater than a then this is uh, uh, 1. So, we have f t minus a for t greater than a and when t is between 0 and a this is 0. So, we have here the 0 function. So, this is exactly the function g t what we have in the earlier form. So, this g t, but just for the, the writing convenience we can directly write this f t minus a h t minus a instead of defining that 
g t in that way. So, one example for this uh, find Laplace transform of g t where g t is 0 t minus uh, 1 whole square and t greater than or equal to 1 and we have between 0 and, and 1 it is 0 and uh, g t is t minus 1 square t greater than a. So, we can directly apply the the uh, shifting theorem now. So, first we need to get the Laplace of t square and that is we know 2 over s uh, q and then the Laplace of this g t which is a shift here now and we can directly by this formula we have e power minus a s and a is, is 1 here. So, we have e power minus s and the Laplace transform of this uh, t square that is 2 over s uh, cube. So, the next property that is the change of scale property. change of scale property. So, what this says we have if the Laplace transform of f t is as f s then the Laplace transform of f a t. So, if the a is a constant will be given by 1 over a and f s over a. So, for the proof we take this Laplace transform of, of a t and by definition we have 0 to infinity e minus s t and this function f a t d t. Again we substitute this a t is equal to u and this is a d t is d u and then our Laplace transform of uh, f a t will be the limits will remain 0 to uh, infinity and e minus s the t is u over a and this f a t is u and we have d u over a. So, what we have here 1 over a and 0 to infinity and e minus instead of s we have s over a u f u d u and as per the definition now this is uh, uh, f s over a. So, we have proved the, the result that one uh, this Laplace of f a t is 1 over a and this is f uh, s over a. So, now we take the example that if the Laplace transform of f t is s square minus s plus 1 over 2 s plus 1 square and s minus 1, then find the Laplace transform f 2 t. So, Laplace transform f 2 t by this uh, change of scale property we have 1 over a. So, 1 over 2 and f s over a. So, we will replace this s by s by 2. So, s by 2 is square minus s by 2 plus 1 over 2 and s over 2 plus 1 whole square and s is s by 2 now minus 1. So, this we can uh, simplify and, and we will get 1 over over 4 here because uh, you have the s square over 4 minus s over 2 plus 1 and there also. So, we simplify this to get s square minus 2 s plus 4 and same here we have this s plus 1 whole square and this uh, s minus 2. Okay. Now, we go for the very important property of this uh, Laplace transform that is the Laplace transform of uh, derivatives. 
So, these, uh, this result will be uh, very useful while solving the differential and, uh, and partial differential equations. So, now we go for the Laplace transform of derivatives or this is also known as derivative theorem. So, suppose, suppose f is continuous on 0 infinity and of exponential order and that f prime is piecewise continuous on 0 infinity, then the Laplace transform of the derivative. So, d f over d t is s and the Laplace transform of f t minus f 0 for real s greater than alpha. So, here just one, one point I, I should mention that if we have here uh, this uh, continuity in the open interval, then this will be replaced by uh, f 0 plus in that case we will take only the limit uh, of f uh, the right limit instead of the value, but if f is continuous at 0 then this is uh, just f 0. So, the proof of this so we have Laplace transform of f prime t and we have 0 to infinity f prime t e minus s t d t and now we integrate this by part. So, we have this integral of this is f t and e minus s t. So, the, here the limit 0 to infinity minus 0 infinity we have again f t and e minus s t and minus s d t. So, here as t approaches to infinity this will uh, go to go to 0 that we, we have seen in the in the last lecture because this function is of exponential order. So, this will uh, go to 0 and then as t approaches to 0 we have f 0. So, we have here minus f 0 and minus minus plus here s and then 0 to infinity f t e minus s t d t and this is the Laplace transform of f t. Okay, and this is for real s greater than alpha because for that only this will be 0. So, this is the result now f t minus f 0 plus s Laplace transform of f t. So, here the interesting feature is that that without having the condition that the f prime is of exponential order here we assume that f prime is only piecewise continuous and what we we get here that the Laplace transform of f prime t will be just minus f 0 plus s Laplace transform of f t. So, without uh, requiring that this f prime itself is of exponential order we can get the, uh, the Laplace transform and in fact, if, 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 we, if we remember that today itself we have seen that this function 2 t e t square and cos uh, e t square. The Laplace transform of this function exists and uh, this is not of exponential order and the now the reason is very clear because this function is the derivative of sin e t square. So, it is a cos and then the derivative of this will be 2 t t square. So, this is the derivative of this function which is here uh, continuous and uh, it is of exponential order, but its derivative is not of exponential order, but now we uh, do not need basically this condition on this derivative uh, and, and we can get the Laplace of this uh, derivative. Okay. So, one more remark 
we have here that uh, this uh, this result we can also generalize this. So, the above result can be generalized. So, for higher order. So, now for the Laplace transform if we want to take for the, the double derivative then we have the Laplace transform oh sorry minus the f prime at 0 as per this uh, uh, con uh, the Laplace transform of the first derivative we have minus f 0 and s Laplace transform of f t. So, plus this s and the Laplace transform of f prime t and now again we apply here. So, we have minus f prime 0 we have s minus f 0 plus s Laplace transform of f t sorry f t the Laplace transform of f t. So, what we got here s square Laplace transform of f t minus this s f 0 and minus f prime 0 this is the Laplace transform of f double prime or in general we have the Laplace transform of f the nth derivative s n the Laplace transform of f t and minus s n minus 1 f 0 minus s n minus 2 f prime 0 and so on minus f the n minus 1 at derivative at 0. So, this is the general form of this derivative theorem. Now, we quickly go for one example determine the Laplace transform of sin square omega t. So, here we can use this derivative theorem because we know that the f t if f t is sin square omega t then f prime t is simply 2 sin omega t and then sin omega t derivative will be cos omega t and we have omega. So, we have omega and 2 sin omega t cos omega t is sin 2 omega t and the Laplace of this we know. So, the Laplace of omega sin 2 omega t which is the derivative now and we apply the derivative theorem. So, the Laplace of of the, the function that is sin square omega t and minus the function value at 0 and this is 0. So, this we know omega is a constant in 2 omega t sin 2 omega t will be uh, 2 omega and we have s square plus this 4 omega square for this and we have 1 s there 1 over s and so this is the Laplace transform of sin square omega t. Okay. So, now the next property of this uh, Laplace transform and, and that is the if we multiply the function by t power n then what will be the Laplace transform. So, multiplication by t power n. So, if the Laplace transform of f t is f s then the Laplace transform of t f t we have multiplied by this t will be simply minus d over d s and f s and in general in general also uh, this result is, is hold that means the the Laplace of t n f t will be uh, minus 1 over n or oh, minus 1 power n and d n over d s n and the Laplace transform of f t. So, this is the general result. So, we'll prove us uh, for this uh, particular case when this n is 1. So, what is given that this f s that is the Laplace transform of f t as 0 to infinity e minus s t 
and f t d t. So, we will prove uh, this uh, we will start with this side and we will arrive uh, that this d over d s of f s is nothing but the Laplace transform of t f t. So, here now we have f s now we take the derivative with respect to s. So, d f s over over d s will be 0 to infinity. So, with respect to s. So, we, we apply the Leibniz rule, rule for uh, differentiation under integral sign and we assume that we can do uh, uh, apply here. So, 0 to infinity and this uh, derivative with respect to s uh, from here we have e minus s t and the derivative of, of this uh, minus s t uh, with respect to x so s we will get minus t and then we have here f t and this d t. So, now what we we uh, get here minus 0 infinity and e minus t and we have t f t. So, instead of this f t we got the new function t f t and this is the Laplace transform of t f t. So, minus the Laplace transform of t f t and the repeated uh, differentiation. So, we take an uh, once more or uh, this uh, differentiation with respect to s and we will get for the second uh, derivative. So, given or differentiation gives the general rule. So, we do not have to prove this general rule this is one can simply uh, go with this higher derivatives here and can get it. So, let us go for the example. So, Laplace transform of t square cos a t solution. So, we have Laplace of this cos a t we know and that is s over s square plus a square. So, we can have now that Laplace for t square cos a t and the rule says minus 1 uh, power n. So, n is 2 here and d 2 over d s is square and the Laplace of this function that is in our case cos a t. So, the Laplace is s is square plus a square. So, this is 1 and we have d over d s and here we differentiate this. So, s is square plus a is square whole is square s square plus a square and derivative of this is 1 minus s as it is and the differentiation of this we get 2 s. So, we have s square minus 2 s square will get minus s square. So, a square minus s square s square plus a square and this whole square. So, we differentiate this again uh, and we get finally, the 2 s s square minus 3 a square over s square plus a square 3. Okay, so, the next property we have uh, the division by t instead of this multiplication now we have division division by t. So, if f is piecewise continuous on 0 infinity and of exponential order. So, piecewise continuous and of exponential order alpha such that the limit t approaches to 0 plus f t over t exist, then we have the Laplace transform of f t over t s to infinity and f u d u for s greater than alpha if we just take the real s. So, for proof we let this g t this function here f t over t. So, that we have f t is uh, 
T uh, G T and then we take the Laplace of F T or that is F S is Laplace of F T is T G T and we apply this uh, result what we got uh, as a last property with T G T. So, we have minus T over minus D over D S the derivative of the Laplace transform of G T and this is what we want to get. So, now what we do we integrate this with respect to uh, S integrating with respect to S from S to uh, S uh, from S uh, from 0 to infinity from 0 to infinity. So, we integrate here this is the Laplace transform of, of uh, uh, g t we will get and this limits from 0 to infinity. So, we will get minus Laplace transform of of g t and our limits from 0 to infinity and the right side we have. So, this side goes to this we have uh, s to infinity uh, sorry we, we need to integrate from s to infinity. So, integrating with respect to s uh, from s to infinity from s to infinity. So, s to infinity and minus we have again s to infinity and f s d s or f u d u. Now, what this gives us when we take this uh, t approaches to uh, sorry this s approaches to infinity this is the function of s only Laplace transform of g t. So, as s approaches to infinity this will approach to 0, because this g t is just f t over t and this uh, limit t tending to 0 exists. So, this is a function then of exponential order and piecewise continuous because f t is piecewise continuous and t is also uh, piecewise continuous and this limit uh, which was the, the singular point basically, but we assume that this limit exists. So, once this limit exists this function f t over g t uh, is piecewise continuous and, and of course, of exponential order then. So, in this case uh, the result says that the Laplace transform of, of any uh, of any piecewise continuous and exponential order function will vanish as s uh, tends to infinity. So, this will be 0 and then minus minus plus and then we have this s. So, simply the Laplace transform of g t and this is uh, s to infinity s to infinity f s d s. So, this is the required result. So, we just go for one example. So, find Laplace transform of sin a t over t and Laplace of uh, sin a t we know it is a, a over s square plus a square then with this property we can get sin a t over t s to infinity a over s square plus a square d s and this is 10 inverse s over a and the limit s to infinity. So, when we put s to infinity this will be pi by 2 and minus 10 inverse s over a. So, now the next property is the Laplace transform Laplace transform of integrals Laplace transform of integrals. So, suppose f t is piecewise continuous on 0 infinity and the function g t 
0 to t f u d u is of exponential order, then the Laplace of of j t will be 1 over s f s. So, we look at the proof. So, what we see first that g 0 is 0 because the t will be 0. So, we have this integral 0 and the derivative of this g is f t. So, derivative is f t and then we use derivative theorem that the Laplace of g prime t will be the s Laplace of g t minus g 0 and, and, and note that that we can apply this uh, derivative theorem because a g t is as piecewise continuous in fact, it is a continuous function one can show because f t is piecewise continuous and we have the integral here. So, g t is, is of course, piecewise continuous and is of exponential order. So, g t is a piecewise continuous and of exponential order and this g prime t which is f t that we have assumed that this is piecewise continuous function. So, the derivative we need only uh, the condition uh, that it should be piecewise continuous and the function should be piecewise continuous and of exponential order. So, we can apply this Laplace uh, uh, this derivative theorem without being this g prime to be uh, of exponential order. So, this is uh, ok to do that here Laplace of g prime t we have this result and in that case we directly get this uh, g 0 is, is 0. So, this is this term is, is 0 and the Laplace transform of g t then is 1 over s and the Laplace transform of f t. So, now the example that the Laplace transform of 0 t sin u over u d u. So, this Laplace transform by this property we have 1 over s and Laplace transform of the function which is uh, sin t over t. So, we have 1 over s and then divide by t that property we can apply. So, s to infinity and the Laplace of, of sin t and d s. So, we have 1 over s s infinity Laplace of sin t 1 over 1 plus s is square d s. So, here we have 10 inverse s. So, pi by 2 minus 10 inverse s and this is uh, 1 over s and we can also write this cot inverse s. So, the next property is the for the periodic function. So, Laplace transform of a periodic function. So, if a function is periodic we can uh, uh, get this Laplace transform uh, with a formula which is much simpler than going directly by the definition. So, if f be periodic function with period period t. So, that we will be talking about more on this periodic function in, in Fourier series. So, here let me just uh, go through quickly. So, we have the periodic function of period uh, t and it must have then uh, that f t is equal to f t plus uh, this period t. So, in that case if we have this property of the function then the Laplace transform of this f t will be 1 over uh, 1 minus e minus s t and the integral 0 to t 
T capital T minus S T and this F T D T. So, here the proof we have the Laplace of this F T which is 0 to infinity E minus S T and F T D T. So, we break this into two uh, parts. So, 0 to T capital T E minus S T and F T D T and the rest that means T to infinity E minus S T and F T D T. And now in this part if we substitute that a new uh, variable of integration tau is equal to T minus the period T in that case we have uh, what we get now. So, T tau will be D T. So, what we get 0 to T E minus S T and F T D T will be this tau. So, the T uh, was tau then or oh, sorry T was this capital T. So, the tau is 0 and for the infinity we get uh, again infinity E minus S and this T we can replace by this tau plus T and this f the t is tau plus t and then we have this d tau and since this f is periodic function. So, this is f tau again. So, tau plus t is f tau. So, e power minus s t we so here is the plus sign. So, what we get now? So, this e uh, power uh, s tau we can uh, s t e power minus s t we can take out of the integral and the remaining integral 0 to infinity e power minus s tau f tau d tau is the Laplace transform of f t again. So, that we take to the left hand side and then take this common the Laplace uh, of f t and uh, the Laplace of f t here then we will get 1 minus e power minus s t and that we can divide. So, what we get now the Laplace transform of f t is 1 over 1 minus e minus s t and 0 to t e minus s t and f t d t. So, this is the result and if we just take one example to show this that find the Laplace transform for the function f t which is defined as 1 and 0 when t is between 0 and 1 and uh, if t is between uh, 1 and 2 it is 0 and then this periodicity we have that f t plus 2 is, is f t for all t positive. So, what we have this function between 0 to 1 it is 1. So, 0 to 1 and then 1 to 2 it is 0 and then we have this periodicity. Okay, so, if we just go for the Laplace transform of f t which is 1 over by this formula 1 minus e minus this t our period is, is 2. So, we have 2 s and we have 0 to 2, 0 to 2 and e power minus s t f t d t and this is 1 over 1 minus e minus 2 s and 0 to 1 because from 1 to 2 this f t is 0. So, we have e minus s t and d t which we can integrate. So, 1 over 1 minus 2 s and we get minus s and e power minus s t. So, t is 1. So, we have e power minus s minus 1 and this we can simplify again. So, we will get s and 1 plus e minus s. So, now there are at, at the end we have two limiting theorems and that is uh, they are also useful. So, we have the limiting theorem.
theorems. So, the first theorem is the initial value theorem. So, this initial value theorem says that suppose that f is continuous on 0 infinity and of exponential order alpha and f prime is also piecewise continuous on 0 infinity and of exponential order and then if we let this f s a Laplace transform of f t then f 0 plus. So, the right limit of f at 0 or this is just t approaches to 0 from the right side f t and this is just the limit s to infinity s f s and this is for s real. So, the proof we can very quickly we can go. So, f prime t is the Laplace of f t and minus f 0 plus this is by the derivative theorem. And now, if we take uh, let the s uh, approaches to infinity and we have assumed that this f prime is, is piecewise continuous and of exponential order. So, this will go to 0. So, we have the limit s approaches to infinity s f s minus f 0 plus and this is the required result. So, at the very end we have this final value theorem. So, suppose that f is continuous on uh, 0 infinity and of exponential order alpha and f prime is piecewise continuous on uh, 0 infinity and furthermore the limit t approaches to infinity f t exists then the limit t approaches to infinity f t. So, in this case we are getting this limit as t approaches to 0 instead of t approaches to or t approaches to infinity instead of t approaches to 0 in the earlier case initial value theorem. So, but this we can get by limit s approaches to 0 s f s and f s is the Laplace transform of of f t. So, here the point is that this is this is very important the limit t approaches to infinity uh, should exist because if just for example, if we take the case that the f t is is sin t and then we get this limit uh, s f s as s approaches to 0 and this we can get. So, limit s to 0 and s f s is s over 1 over s is square and this is 0. So, this limit we got here 0, but this does not mean that the t approaches to 0 the sin t is 0 because this limit does not exist. So, this is equal when this limit exists. So, this is uh, very important to have this and with this uh, we can just uh, very quickly just see uh, uh, one example that without determining the determining this f t and assuming that uh, the f t satisfy the hypothesis of the limiting theorem we want to get uh, this f t and this limit t approaches to infinity uh, f t if the Laplace transform of f t is given that is 1 over s plus 10 inverse a over s. So, we, the, we can get this the t approaches to 0 f t by the initial value theorem and this is equal to s approaches to infinity uh, s f s. So, limit s approaches to infinity s f s we have 1 plus s 
tan inverse a over s and as h uh, s approaches to infinity so this is 1 plus this limit which is uh, infinity and then we have tan inverse 0 so we have uh, 0 so to get this 0 over 0 form we take tan inverse uh, a over s divided by 1 over s and then we apply the L orbital rule. So, in that case this limit would be uh, 1 over the derivative of this 1 over a square over s square and its derivative minus a over s square and the whole will be divided by minus 1 over s square the derivative of 1 over s. And now, if we let this s approaches to infinity, so this s square gets cancelled and we have simply here uh, a uh, over 1, so it is a, so we get 1 plus a its limit. Now, if we take the another one for the final value theorem that t approaches to infinity and f t is limit s to 0 and s f s. Now, if s to 0, so this is uh, again the limit s to 0 1 plus s 10 inverse a over s and this s to 0 this is uh, pi by uh, 2. So, we have just 1. So, with the help of this Laplace transform we can get two limiting uh, values of the function as t approaches to 0 and t approaches to infinity with this limiting value theorems. Okay, so, we, uh, we uh, end this lecture here and we have discussed now uh, various properties of the Laplace transform and with the help of uh, these properties in the next lecture we will um, uh, continue to get uh, to evaluate the Laplace transform of, of some complicated functions and then those functions will be used for uh, for the application part where we will be solving the differential equation so that's all for this lecture thank you goodbye